All right, I have an idea. I still have a large blank wall at my place, and today I decided I want to make something to fill part of that. And I had a fun idea to transform a design or art piece that I had and to turn it into a giant glowing acrylic sketch on my wall. The idea is pretty simple. Take a sketch or a drawing of mine that I like, scale that up so that it's the size that I want on the wall, and then light it and illuminate it to make it glow. Now how I hope to achieve this is much better shown in this perfect example I already have. A while ago for a school project, I created this section model for a building I was designing and on it, it featured this acrylic plate on top of it to show more detail in the section cut. This shows the general idea of what I want to do. I would laser cut my sketch onto an acrylic sheet and then light up the edge of the acrylic so that it shines in, fills the entire acrylic sheet, and all of the laser cut sections just explode with light and make a really cool effect of this glowing drawing. For this project, I am thinking of making three separate light drawings out of the acrylic. Each one will have three main components. First, some housing to contain the lights that doubles as a connection to the wall. Then, the acrylic sheet itself. And finally, the laser cut design to put onto that sheet. I started modeling some simplistic ideas for what this could look like to get a general sense of what I would need. And you will notice that on some of these iterations, the housing gets kind of large. Here's the problem. I have a weird hatred for cords, wires, anything that kind of ruins the magic of something. I don't want to make this big, large acrylic art piece and then have this big, ugly cord hanging off the side to be able to power it. So the housing needs to be big enough to be able to hold batteries on the inside to keep it running or something else. I found this rechargeable LED strip that is generally used for something like under cabinet lighting, but this should work for the project with some tweaks. It has a USB rechargeable port that I can plug this in only when it's needed for a quick recharge, and then the rest of the time, there's no cords. Now this thing is already pretty thin, but I want to see if I can make it any thinner. So I'm going to take this apart to see what we're working with. Ah, okay. Now if you take a look really close right in here, you will see that I have no idea what I'm looking at on this, so I'm just going to put this back together and say that it's good enough since the battery pack looks pretty sealed in there. I want to make a quick test piece though just to see my limitations with this light to make sure that it works for everything that I want. So let's draw and make something. So here are the test results. I did two test pieces in two different styles just to see what would come out better. I tried to sketch them in under 10 minutes just to keep them simple and the hardest part about this was trying to think of how to draw with light. It's just a little confusing since on something like the lighthouse sketch, the darker parts are what will actually get cut, so they need to be dark but they are actually light. It's a little confusing. The digital sketch for the bird was way easier since I could just invert the colors whenever I got confused and wanted to see what it would look like. Now I did this in two different options since the Glowforge laser cutter has a really cool feature on it of being able to take a drawing or photo and engrave it with the variable power settings or the density. And I've had some success with this in the past of taking a photo or a sketch with this technique on other mediums like wood, but I've never tried it on acrylic before. The other test that I did on the computer and sketching digitally was to try and be as just clean as possible since every fingerprint, every speck of dust, any rogue laser marks will just light up. And this is essentially my control version to make sure that something on this works, since the photo engrave function might not be the best for this acrylic. Now, I got a little bit sidetracked for the housing part of this project, since I was just having a lot of fun messing around with the acrylic and drawing, so I circled back to designing the casing of this, and I think I actually got it to a very nice spot, and I'm very happy with it. But it is very late right now, I have to be up for work in three hours, so I'm just going to explain this part very quickly and go to bed. When I originally opened up this light, I was trying to get everything out of it. The battery, the magnet, the PCB. What I ignored though was the lights, and these actually just slip right out. That's actually really nice because this piece no longer needs to sit horizontally anymore. It can fit vertically and it can be very thin and that reduces the overall profile for this casing and I can still get the lights to shine upwards. And that's actually probably really good since I was using edge lit acrylic to edge light my acrylic, which works, it's just horribly inefficient. I also took a look at the motion sensor because there is an auto function for this to turn on when there's motion, but I think that could be cool, although realistically I don't think I will ever actually walk close enough to this to actually trigger it, so I am just removing the cap to further reduce the overall profile of this thing. But it is very workable now, and the profile of this is just so thin in comparison to what I had previously. But it's getting late here, so I'm just going to work on building that tomorrow. All right, let me explain a little bit further of how this case is actually going to get built. 
I plan to make this out of walnut wood and other 3D printed components. Here's how it will come together. These pieces should be light enough to just use command strips to attach them to the wall so that we don't have to worry about holes in the wall or patching them later. The piece in the back I might make out of a cheaper material like something like white oak because you will never actually see this piece at all. The top and the bottom of the container pieces will just be thin strips of walnut and on the inside the metal frame of the light will just sit on the left side with the light strip pulled out and to the front. Those LED lights will just sit on top of little 3D printed stands to be able to hold it up. Another walnut strip will be the first cover that hides the housing behind the acrylic piece and on the other front corners there will be more blocks of 3D printed materials that are placed to solve three different problems. They will be there to act as a depth stop for the front plate, they will be what the front plate screws into, and then they will also act as a stand to hold the acrylic plate off and above the light. The front plate will then get screwed onto the rest of the housing to secure it to the acrylic plate and to everything else, but this is also easily removable if I ever want to change out the plates for different artwork that I can have. Now the corner caps for this will also be 3D printed so that they can just friction fit right into place, but on that left side I can have a hole in it so that I can still access the switch and the charging port. Now this is for the bottom component, but the top will be the exact same, just without the need for a light or any of the other associated parts. So I've already made a set of two of these and I think I might have a problem. I, I think I may have made a mistake. When I was originally messing around with the lighting and the test pieces on this, I would always use a black background because that would just make the drawing pop with a lot of contrast. And I'm kind of worried about the setup that I have and if it will actually look good or not. Now, if you are very observant, you will realize that my walls aren't black. And that's not the end of the world, but that contrast really helps because when the light hits the laser cut sections, it will scatter the light and that will light up portions of the white wall, just making the contrast less. I thought about doing a redesign for the housing and to try and incorporate a darker back plate to it, but I'm kind of emotionally attached to the design that I had and I don't really want to switch it up. I might need to paint the wall behind it black or add in another material behind it, or I could just keep going and hope that everything looks good in the end. I, I don't really know. <laughs> this is also what 90% of my projects actually look like, is just me sitting and thinking all the time. You know that saying where you should think twice about something before you do it so you can seriously consider what it is you're doing? What if you don't think about it, even once, and you just go for it instead? That way, if it's a bad idea, I didn't know about it, it's not my fault, so I'm just gonna keep going. Putting all of the housing pieces together actually goes very quickly. None of these pieces are difficult to assemble, which is a nice change from my regular projects. I ended up laser cutting all of the wood pieces for this project just because my laser cutter is five feet away from me, so that's very easy. And I think that all of the burned edges will look pretty good with the dark color of the 3D printed materials on this. However, there is still some pretty interesting nuances of putting this actually all together. The wood that I used was definitely not planed down fully and all matching. I kind of just eyeballed it and it looked fine. And so there are some very minor slight variations to the thickness of this. So the 3D printed parts will need to adapt to handle that. Now that the housing portion of this project is all done, we can move on to the drawing portion, which will take a very long time, but I can probably whip something up pretty quick and boom. Cool, right? No, seriously, is it, is it cool? I'm just gesturing to a blank wall here. I have no idea what I'm even drawing yet. And drawing is gonna take like a week at a minimum, so I should probably go start on that. For the main drawing, I want all of the three plates to somewhat flow into each other. I took inspiration from stuff that I like, such as architecture, nature, and astronomy. For the architecture portion, I started on the bottom plate with a perspective sketch of a pagoda and its floor plan since I needed a proportionally taller building type to make sense of this tall orientation of these three panels. I added in a little topo site map off to the side in a mountain landscape for the made up site of this building as we move up into the second panel. I wanted it to fade up into an eclipse like sun which I think will look really nice when it's lit up and there are some clouds that then blend into detail leaves on the side running up into the final panel to have a bonsai tree at the top to kind of match the vibe of the pagoda and with a constellation chart in the sky above everything else. I'm actually very proud of how this turned out. I'm still new to the whole digital drawing space, so this was definitely a challenge to say the least, but it turned out fantastic and I love it, which is good because I spent longer than I care to admit on doing all of this. While drawing all of this, I also bumped up the line weights a little bit from my original test so that the lines could be seen a little bit better since I wanted to be seen from far away. So now the next step for this is going to be cutting all of my drawings on the laser cutter for like the next seven hours because I'm trying to make really high passes with this to get really good detail on it.
Okay, well, now another big problem has arisen. While the acrylic was busy cutting, I spent some time to perfect the 3D printed components for this project and just made them perfect. Much better than I had them before, but that might not matter because now there is a problem with the acrylic plate. Let me show you. So here's the side by side. This is my test piece and this is my new cut acrylic. When I put the light up to the test piece, it's all perfect, it looks great. However, when I put the light to my new one, the light does not make it all the way up to the top. So that's not good. My only guess is that this is caused by the material thickness of the acrylic. I have tried to remove every other variable other than that. So now there are two main options to solve this. Either add a light at the top as well to hopefully even it out and to help out a bit, but it still kind of fades a little bit in the middle, which I don't really like. Or the second option is to change to a thicker acrylic, which will cost a lot of money because thicker acrylic gets expensive pretty quickly. Not to mention it's then heavier on the wall and then all of the housing parts I've already built will need to be fully redone to accept a thicker acrylic. I'm going to start out by trying a thicker acrylic first to see if it actually even solves the problem before I go through the process of redesigning and adjusting the rest of the current build. Well, we have some good news and we have some bad news. The good news is this looks beautiful. This acrylic plate looks a lot better now. The glow travels up the entire acrylic plate, unlike before, but the bad news to all of this is now I have to redo all of the wood housing pieces I've already done and change them, which is fine because I think that's the right solution. I probably should have checked on this sooner. I have also had to make some slight modifications to the housing for the new acrylic. The 3D printed edges will now need to be glued on since I need this as one solid system since there's a rotational moment force in the way that I designed the bottom of the wood pieces to come together, which is now a bigger problem with the heavier acrylic. I also added in a little 3D printed stop block behind the light to hold it in place better and to help the back walnut plate sit perpendicular to the rest of the frame. I also reduced the lip on the switch side to get better access to the light switch and the charging port and made the screw backings slightly thicker. And just to top it off, I countersunk all of the screws so now they sit perfectly flush. So I went ahead and got everything hung up on the wall. It went up surprisingly smooth. Those command strips were a huge help and they hold the plates on very well. Those things are not going anywhere. I've gone ahead and added a black mat board behind all of the acrylic plates as well, just to help with the contrast. So now the only question left is, does it look good? And yeah, it's pretty cool. They already glow so well during the daytime and night should just be even better. This was also supposed to be the part of the video where I show off all of the other different iterations I did. There were ones that were horizontal, there were ones with color, there were so many different layouts. But now with the acrylic being so expensive, this will be a project to do over time since I can always switch out these plates. So if you thought this project was cool, I'm sure that you will like some of the other things that I built. So check out another video right here.